Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels. Back to the streets. Today's drive through message is the seven golden candlesticks. Alright, I've been trying to get around to teaching on seven golden candlesticks for a while. I think now's perfect timing. So I've been led by the Spirit to do so. Uh, we're going to turn to Exodus 25:31. We'll start there. Now, the seven golden candlesticks has prominent meaning in the Bible, and we're going to go and look at just a couple of places where it's mentioned. But the seven golden candlesticks are also in heaven. And as on earth as is in heaven. And we're going to study what the meaning of this is. Uh, 2531. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls and knops and flowers shall be of the same. Now, behind me here, these are the knops, these are the branches. This is the main branch, the center branch, as you can see. This is called uh, the seven, this is the seven golden candlestick or menorah. Some people call it in the Hebrew. But this is what, the, what he's talking about. And thou shalt make a a candlestick of pure gold, a beaten work shall the candlestick be made. One piece, his shaft and his branches, his bowls and his knops and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Here's the six branches. One, two, three, and then on the other side, one, two, three. And in the center, you have the main branch. And six branches shall come out of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side. Three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds. With a knob and flowers in one branch. Three bowls. Now remember, any um, you that follow street priests remember we taught on the Ark of the Covenant. And the the artifacts that was placed in there. One of them was an almond branch. And it blossomed. Something dead coming to light symbolized what Christ was to do. His resurrection. His death bringing life. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knot and a flower and one branch. And three bowls made like the almonds in the other branch with a knot and flower. So the six branches come out of the candlestick. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds, with their knobs and their flowers. And there shall be a knob of the two branches of the same, and a knob under the branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Okay. So you see that that's what this is referring to. And you got the and you got the uh, knobs up here. Alright. Now we're gonna go to so you see that's found in in the Exodus, in the beginning of the book, when God is laying out the law after they just he just uh rescued him from Egypt's bondage and he's given him the uh, artifacts that are going to the uh, tabernacle. I'm not taught on the tabernacle, you can get that teaching too as well. And I taught on all the artifacts in it. Revelations 1.12 I'm going to go there. 
Revelations 1.12. We go from the beginning to the end. The Revelations 1.12. Well, let's start it. Let me see. Yeah, we started at 112. Okay. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. These are gold, seven golden candlesticks in Revelations. And this is Christ now. Christ is resurrected. And John is. John the Revelator is seated in his glory. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his, his foot, and girded about paps with golden girdle. Now I'm taught on the Revelation, get the Apocalypse series. But I just wanted to point out that you can find that seven golden candlestick reference right here with Christ. So it has very important, you see that in the and God giving it in the law, he also sent it after the law. Christ represents his death after the law. And there's that seven golden candles there. Now go to Zechariah. We'll do a little skip chase. We're going to Zechariah 4, 1. Zechariah 4, 1. Now this is the visions of Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah, he had four visions. We're going to focus on this one here. I done taught on Zechariah before. You get my teaching. I taught on the whole book of Zechariah, I believe. I am taught on all the minor books of the, of the Bible, all of them. So you can get to the minor prophet series as well. we we'll get that teaching too. All right, Zechariah 4.1. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me. It'd be nice to be woken up by an angel. <laughs> and the angel that talked with me came again and waked me. As a man that waketh out of his sleep. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl up on the top of it. And his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are up on the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bow, and the other on the left side thereof. So I answered and spake unto the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said, Unto me, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. The angel said, Don't you know? Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, when God invokes that name, Jehovah Sabbath. Lord of armies, he let you know he's Lord of everything. He has all power in his disposal. He can summon anything. Animal creation, animate objects, inanimate objects, stars, so anything to fight his battle for. He can use whatever. He can dispatch whomever. Many examples of that in the Bible. Rain down hill on the enemies, call forth locusts, use lions to kill people. <laughs> he can do what he wants. He's the Lord of all. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plague, and he shall bring forth his head, stone thereof, with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Now we're going to go 
to Zechariah 6 12. Skip on down. Now, grace is charisma. Charisma in the Greek. Unmerited favor. Holy Spirit is always symbolized with grace. And this seven candle golden, this uh, seven candle stick represents, and it's, it's to be fueled with the oil of the Spirit. The light of God's Word is to burn with the fueling of the Holy Spirit. And you got in the center, the center branch, which is this right here, it represents, this is the main branch represents Christ. Six is the number of a man, plus one, seven, the number of completion, holders, fullness. That's why you have seven, but Christ makes it seven. Six is the number of a man, are not You fall short, you know, I'm teaching on that. I'm taught to fall the man, tell him the number six. All six six is is man trying to reason the number divine manifestation try to manifest himself as God. It's humanism, it's all it is. Humanism maximum. But anyway, back to the candle, golden candlestick. Gold represents perfection, God's perfection. We're imperfect. We're made perfect by what Christ did at Calvary. Made perfect by the blood of Lamb, his shed blood. Christ is in the middle of this gift. He represents the middle. And we're the branches. Jesus said, I'm the branch. Except you invited me. You can't, you know, you're worthless. You can't do anything. So if we're in Christ, we're part of this, the branches of this seven golden candlestick. It has a lot of meaning in the Bible, like I said, this also represented in heaven, the actual seven candle golden stick, or seven uh, candlestick, the golden candlestick now, get the tongue tied. But it's in heaven as well, the, the seven golden candlestick. Now, Zechariah 6, 12, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. See, Christ is the branch. This here is called the branch. This is the main branch of the, of the candlestick. And we're the periphery branches. Now, like I said, you was to put the oil was to be of one source, olive oil symbolizing the Holy Spirit. The fire represents the fire of the Holy Spirit, His will, His desire should burn in us what God wants us to do. But Christ is the center of it all. That's what this golden, seven golden candlestick represents. Unity in Christ. All one. Bible has a lot to say about the body of Christ and unity of the faith. But that's what that represents. And he's the branch. He's the one that holds it all together. We abide him. Now, in Revelations, I had taught, I'm not going to teach on it now, you can get to teach it. But I taught on the on the seven ages of the church is also represented. The candlestick, each age. And Christ had spoken to you can get that teaching on the apocalypse. He spoke to each age, there was a message for each age. And there was a messenger, an angel for each age. But that also symbolized Christ was at the center of each age. The seven candle golden. The, the uh, golden seven candlestick. 
<laughs> so, I hope this message inspires you to stay connected to Christ. As Christ said, without me you can do nothing. And that's what this message is for, for unity of the faith to stay in Christ. The church world is so divided up into denominations and creeds and this and that. And it, they done took Christ out and substituted religion. That's Satan's good at that. Man. God's not the author of confusion, but the devil is. There's so much confusion. And not only that, but they take these creeds and these denominations and they, they built their own towers of Babel, erected them as the corner of truth. In other ways, in other ways, if you don't recognize our denomination, our religion, our what we feel, God has called us to do when we, we got the corner of truth here, you're not gonna be saved that you recognize our church, our, our creed. That's not so. You always found God outside the camp. When you look at the scripture in the Bible, the camp was outside, the tabernacle was outside the camp. And God's doing the work now. He's raising up an army outside the religious institutions that are pretty much unsold out Especially to sell out Sam's and Sally by the poor kids. Members of the synagogue of Satan, one world religion. Preaching this homogenized, bland, fake gospel. That's, going to, that's really the forerunner to the false prophet and Antichrist coming up on the scene. Religion's a powerful force. Satan's going to utilize it to get the whole world to take the mark of the beast. But if we want to be the seven golden candlesticks, rooted and grounded in Christ, even in this apostate age, stay rooted in him, the Holy Spirit, connected through faith. Christ is born in your heart by faith. Stay connected in faith to God's word. It's what we emphasize the street priests, God's word. You can't go wrong. And his word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. It's what this seven golden candlestick represents. Light. The unity of the faith, Christ at the center of it all, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Let's use this fuel to expose this, this sinful occultic age that we're living in. If we had that unit, remember that's the key to the seven golden candlestick. All right, if I'm the one that taught you give, go to Street Priest Ministry, dot org, and hit that donate button, Galatians 6, it's only if I taught you. If I haven't taught you, I'm not talking to you. Bring your tithes, first fruit, alabaster box. Streetpriestministry.org at the donate button. Good day, good evening, good night to you around the world. May you grow in faith in Jesus' name.